Hey, I'm Kev Kev, I'm Mr. Cohen. Welcome back to MotoGP17 and the manager careers. We're headed to Germany. And here we are around the Saxon ring, and you never guess what the conditions were like in free practice. Yes, it was dry, as you can see in the background, but a wet track. And that moment, Donald was fastest by a country mile ahead of Marquez and the flying thing with Rossi, and Vinales in fourth and fifth, and Dovi, Pedroza, Quattro, Inoni, and Lorenzo sneaking through in to qualify into a head of Zarco by just over a tenth of a second. So let's see if the conditions will continue for McDonald and if he can grab another pole in qualifying. So here we are for qualifying. But as you can see, it is a dry track now. Yeah, the clouds are overhead. Looking menacing. But it's a dry track, so for McDonald it's going to be a bit tougher to get a pole than anything the wreck. But he does like this circuit. It's been kind to him in the past. Let's see what he can do. Of course, last season, a fantastic battle with his teammate for the victory. Just teammate one. So, of course, McDonald's trying to get revenge on that. And also extend his championship lead over his teammate, like just like he did last time out in Athens. So, they've really emerged as the top two. Just like we saw in real life as well in 2017 with Dovi and Marcus really stretching out ahead of everyone else in the second half of the season. But this is the end of the first half of the season. What first half of the season it has been for elusive. MotoGP, of course, you see McDonald win a number of races. So is the Flying Finn. He's been very consistent, always up there. And that's why he is McDonald's closest challenger. That's why you know, Scott may be having the edge in outright, outright pace. McDonald hasn't quite got the results the Finn has. So it'll be interesting to see if that dynamic continues in the second half of the season and if I think maybe grab some victories to close this gap on McDonald's. They've been so consistent up there. Always scoring points. As in Moto2, we said Andre, he may not qualify well. There's an 18-4 for McDonald. But boy does he race, does the Italian, and it's regaining the championship lead in Moto2 with victory last time at Aston. Seems like he's having a close championship battle there. Of course we saw with McDonough as well. And look at this, he's even faster on his second lap. His first sector. Very tricky first sector. It's flowing, but you're just waiting for the power, especially in that long right hand at the bottom of the hill. Now we build the revs up slightly into the second half of the lap where it's just quick. It's a bit like Mazzano, isn't it? A bit slow at the beginning, but then you need to speed up and again McDonald faster. But for Andrea, yeah, if he can just continue racing well, putting out the results, as been dies goes faster. 18.3. Oh, McDonald on the grass at keeping his foot to the floor. Or to the handlebars. And now we've got is that Crutcho pushing us out right? That's a half a second faster than Vinales. Are we being denied pole here by Crutcho in the final sector? So it gets on the power. And yes, yeah, second. 18.3. Oh, LCR. We're coming down to your pit. We're not happy with the Brit there. As it's cost McDonald, perhaps even a front row, as everyone's in the 18 flats. Look how close he was at the top. As Marcus has grabbed ahead of Rossi and Vinales, and it's the flying thing ahead of McDonald and Dovi. Then we've got Pedroza, Crutcho, and Lorenzo on the third row, then on the fourth row, Inoni, Zarco, and Aspargro on the Aprio. So let's see if McDonald can fight his way to the front in the race. So here we are for race day and Nicole has returned. No rain has there are the Lisa Trins on the four on the second row and fourth and fifth. And hopefully they're gonna have a good start to this long race as well. That rise has outside the top show you've got Folger leading the fifth, row, Petrucci leading the sixth. Very poor qualifying for Danilo. And you've got that to ease at Spargo. Places on the grid. The light is about to go out any second now. This is when the riders have to clear their minds completely. They can give it everything they've got. In the 7th and 8th rows, as once again get interrupted by Gavin Emmett. So McDonald not with a clear run to the first corner. And I've always been used to recently as the lights go out for this 8 that race. This see if getting a good start. Oh, that's a good start. Look at this. He's racing into the lead, is he? Hound about a hound about within the hardest. 
in the first goal corners. We can help solve the wet weather, but allows them to get a better run on these wet tyres. As he stuck to the dry line, did the Yamaha man, the factory Yamaha man. So McDonald leads as an incident in the first sector. Lorenzo down again for Jorge. Oh, he's not having a good run of things, is he, the Spaniard? As he escaped the first sector in the lead, does McDonald superb start? So halfway through this opening lap, he's got a gap of almost two seconds on Vinales. And now Rossi has passed his teammate. That's only going to help McDonald, the Yamaha pair behind, start battling. Now two and a half second lead. Once again, it could be another quiet race for McDonald. As here comes the rain as well. Just helping the Scotsman. If Vinales gets past Rossi. And on to the second lap. Already into the 19s. 19-4. What's that in start? Three seconds ahead of Vinales. Rossi in third. Well, importantly for McDonald as well. The flying fin not on the podium. But he is going to extend that championship lead. Quite a margin if they stay where they are now. goes through this first sector and again it might be a race where I'm going to talk about the MotoGP season just covering the satellite teams and the last time out I did say the Aprilia Grissini effort was a factory effort it's also an independent satellite effort because Grissini is an independent team so it's both it's confusing I know but we've got a five second lead for McDonald on this second lap and these laps do fly by even in these wet conditions. Takes a bit of a wide line in. Takes a late apex. That's what you really need to do at that corner. Look how bumpy it is as well. It goes on to the front stretch. There's a McDonald. And that, that was slower than his opening that. How does that work? A couple of tenths. Of course, the track is a bit wetter, but still would have expected him to be slightly faster than from a standing start. So on his third lap, let's begin getting into the satellite teams and training centre. Begin with LCR, Honda, Cal Crutcho. I think it's just Cal Crutcho this season. <laughs> Started the season off, no, ended the season strongly in 2016. Was one of the top riders in MotoGP. Got in a couple of wins. We know in Australia. We're kind of hoping maybe carry that forward into this season, but apart from a podium in Argentina at the beginning of the year, it is just up and down for Quattro, just like normal. Unfortunately for him, it seems to be that's his. That's what he is now. He is just incredibly inconsistent and. Yeah, that string of results he had at the end of the last season may be an anomaly for him, unfortunately, in his MotoGP career, as he can't string together a whole season, unfortunately. They can't say enough unfortunates about Cal Crutch or MotoGP. There's no doubt he's got the talent, but just not the consistency. Maybe he'd be helped with having the teammate next season, with Nakagami alongside him. Have another set of data to look at. We'll see. But in the top independent team, what's the Tech 3 Yamaha? Their rookie pair of Zarco and Folger. What a pairing they are. Especially Zarco, double Moto 2 champion. Coming in full of confidence into Moto GP. And then in his first race, just takes the lead in a handful of laps. Fortunately, he did crash out, but still, he grabbed a number of podiums, ended the season with a couple of podiums at Malaysia, and in Valencia, battling for the win with Danny Pedroza, who's on there. May have lost that battle, but. Boy, I'm excited to see what the Frenchman can do next season. It has been very exciting to see Zarko. Brilliant as well. He's even grabbed a pole as well in the middle part of the season, so. 
Never know, maybe a win is just around the corner for the Frenchman. And if that Yamaha proves to be good next year as well, for Tech 3, who will bet against him? As there we go, 18.4 for McDonald. That's more like it. And so halfway through this race, into the second half of this race, it really is flying by. And Volga as well, let's not forget the German. He was pretty good on that Tech 3 as well. Got the podium in his home race in Germany, round this track. Unfortunately, had issues and he's been diagnosed with Gilbert's disease, I believe it is. Or Gilbert's syndrome. I apologize. Kind of head of etri. Head of etri. Disease, if I can barely pronounce that word. So, you know, he's going to be treated for that. Going to adjust his diet in the off season. Hopefully, he'll come back stronger next season with the German. As he definitely did also show some potential on that Tech 3 bike. And what an exciting pair and they were, you know, especially in the first half of the season. And after that, you got Premat Ducati. And they were right behind Tech 3. Well, not right behind, but in Petrucci's hands they were. Eight for the Italian in the final standings. Four podiums, battling for the win as well. On a couple of occasions. Fantastic season from the Italian. Bouncing back from last year where he started off the season with injury problems. But then was the class of Scott Redding. And you earn the right to have can't spec bike for this season. Redding was on the 2016 bike. But still, Petrucci took full advantage of it and getting eighth in the championship for the Italian. Fantastic from him. And for Premek as well. Finishing in the top five in the team's championship. And Scott Redding just couldn't match his teammate. Which is a bit understandable in a year old bike. But we'll see what you can do next season with a pre. Because this, the Brit does, definitely has the talent. He just hasn't really gelled in MotoGP fully, it feels like. After finishing run up in Moto2 to Paul Spargo. And the pair came up. So yeah, he's with his third different manufacturer now in MotoGP with a pre alongside he used to swell going next year. Will you finally find a bike that you can get on with consistently? We'll find out. I haven't at least swell go alongside him. That's a tough teammate. Especially a guy who's been with that team for a season now, with that Aprilia. And there's the ins and out of the bike while well, Reading will perhaps just be learning next season. What you can do. In the first half of the season especially. Oh yeah, those are the top three satellite teams. On the top of my head. Of course, with a pre Cuisini as well. Now you go to the likes of... Oh, that's Paul as well. Go down. There's KTM. Once again, KTM have a fantastic race. Yeah, then you've got... Mark VDS. With Jack Miller. 11th in the championship for the Australian. Superb season. I'm excited to see what he can do on the Premac alongside Petrucci next season. Again, he'll be on a year old bike as there's Crutch though. See, this game is realistic. Out from 7th, crashing out is the Brit. So we've got a massive Levo within the others with Rossi still in 3rd. But yeah, Jack men are very good. And it seems that jump up to MotoGP level really did pay off for this season. His third season, used to it with Mark VDS and, as like I said, pushing well at Promac alongside Petrucci. Again, he'll be on a year old bike compared to the Italian, I believe. He'd just be, you know, in Scott Redding's seat. But there's a couple of riders who are standouts in satellite teams. Pair them together. Very strong for Premat next season. And stringing together a whole season for this train for the first time Motor GP level. Of course, he had his injury issues. Even had that this season after the miss a race as well. After I think it was like Rossi having a dirt bike incident. But yeah, strain came on very strong this season. And then we've got Avintia. 
with Hector Barber, who finished 10th in the championship last season, but just not getting on this season. Nor Baz was stronger, having his best season in MotoGP, and it's very disappointing to see the Frenchman forced out the MotoGP for next season. And then Aspar with Baptiste, who was very strong up and down a bit like Crutch, though. We've got a couple of top fives and in Cal Abraham, who returned to the championship after being in World Superbikes. Being very solid on the other machine. And they're returning next season with Aspar, so I hope they do well. Has McDonald definitely did well in the Saxon. We're winning by half a minute ahead of Rossi. Where's Vinales? Sixth. Once again, are we having a glitch where, again, it's seven seconds lost on the final lap? That seems to be consistent. So is that another glitch on the final lap where a rider's lost seven seconds and has gone down the order? We've got to have this nipped at most over the next game. As it see, that happened to Rossi last race as well in Aston. It's happened with Vinales this race. You've seen it in the past as well, where riders have appeared to finish behind McDonald at the finish line, but then have just gone down the order in the final stands for whatever reason. Once again, the timing's a bit messed up, it feels like, in this game. So we've got Rossi second, the flying thing grabbing the podium ahead of Marcus Dovi. There's Vinales. And we've got Pedrosa in 17, only 8. Zarko 9. Scott Redding getting a top 10 on his Premier League. Good result for the Brit ahead of his fellow countrymen of Cal Crutcher in 11th. Then Aspargo 12th, Petrucci 13th, Falga 14th. And there's Baptista grabbing the final point ahead of Baz by around half a second. And then we've got Lorenzo in 17th, just missing out on a point with Paul Spargo right at the back after his fall. So in the championship at the halfway mark of the season, McDonald leads by 30 points ahead of the Flying Finn, who's also 30 points ahead of Mark Marquez in third. Then there's Maverick Vinales down in fourth, 65 points back. Boy, he's got a mountain to climb for the reigning champ if he wants to retain his crown. With Rossi rounding out the top five, just five points behind his teammate. Then we've got Dovi in sixth, Crutcher in seventh, Pedroza up to eighth ahead of Petrucci. Zarka ran out the top ten. You've got Enoni ahead of the Renzo down in twelfth. Horrible season for Jorge. Then we've got Reddy in thirteenth ahead of Esprago. Then you've got Volga, Mira, Baz, Batista, and Alex Rins. The last point to score of a solitary point on his Suzuki. Then Hector Barber rounding out the top 20 of Robat, Paul Spargo, Sam Nose, Cal Abraham, and Bradley Smith right at the back. Then in the constructor stand in Tamali by 87 points ahead of Honda, who are just 17 points ahead of Ducati. Then you've got Suzuki in fourth, Apriya in fifth, and KTM not on the scoreboard. Well, in the team's rankings, elusive, kind of running away with it. 105 points ahead of the factory Yamaha team with. Honda in third, Ducati fourth, Pramac fifth, ahead of Tech three by 17 points. Good result from the Pramac team so far. Then you've got LCR in seventh, just five points behind Tech three. Then you've got Suzuki, Apriya, Mark Vidas ran out the top 10 level on points with Avincia and Aspar. That's going to be an interesting battle in the second half of the season with the Hatchy KTM effort not on the scoreboard. So yes, another celebration for McDonald and the Colognes as Fine Fame and Rossi exchange notes in the background. And yes, he's been riding the Rovers at CES. As a fantastic result in MotoGP with both riders on the podium. Another 1-2 in Moto2 as Andrea went from 33rd up to 1st. Of course, leads the championship at the halfway mark. And then the Portuguese rider started third, finished second, up to 6th in the championship. Well, with Moto3, it was another victory for the Swede from second on the grid, and he leads the championship. With Ayan Joe started third, finished third, he's second in the championship. So another 1-2 in the championship for Elusive. As Ayan Joe improves his forward manager and body position, and the Portuguese rider improves his braking, cornering and body position, and Andre improves his cornering, and another fantastic hall of credits and reputation. So we head into the second half of the season with a hangover. So, of course, we're having a free weekend. Let's just check on the garage, check on the R&D. So we've still got seven weeks for the engine, five weeks for the frame, three weeks for the suspension for the KTM. And we end the episode with an activity day. And we can go to the gym, do some muscle building for a rise, improve the throttle control, the ability by 100 XP. Do an interview, get extra credits bonus if you achieve a sponsor objective by 100%. Q&A with the fans, get an extra reputation bonus for an extra if you achieve a sponsor objective by 100%. A high society, get 750 reputation for taking class in a high class social uh, event. Well, the clear winner here is the muscle building.
And let's check on the championships today, the Moto 2, Moto 3, and Kurs to see how they look. So the constructors stand as Kallax lead by 120 points out of KTM. The Tech 3 in third, suit to fourth, and speed up. Not on the scoreboard. And in the Riders' Championship, as you can see, Andrea leads by 22 points ahead of Alex Marquez. He really has built that gap in the last couple of races. With Franco Morbidelli, 57 points back in third. And then you've got Luti Pacini. There's the Portuguese rider, just five points behind the Italian veteran. And then we've got Oliviera down in seventh. A point behind his fellow countrymen. And then you've got Lorini in eighth, Dakigami ninth, Cortuaro in tenth. We've got the Master Tetition in 11, Baldessari 12, Schroeder 13th, Bagnaia 14th, Donny Kent 15th, Agatha 16th, and Raffin, the last point scoring 17th out of 34 riders with the best non point scoring rider, Axel Pons and 18th, ahead of Simone Corsi on that speed up. Then Brad Binder rounds out the top 20. You've got Ika getting the wooden spoon at the moment. So in Moto 3, there's only two constructors scoring points. Unfortunately, Peugeot and Mahindra not on the scoreboard. But KTM leads Honda by 26 points. And in the Riders' Championship, look at that lead for the Swede. 55 points ahead of his teammate. He's just two points ahead of one mare. Then we've got Kenet in fourth. And McPhee in fifth. There's only the top five are in triple digits. That is amazing. We have the Italian in Seat Fanati, seventh Martin, eighth Hotel, ninth. Rodrigo rounding out the top 10. Good stuff from the Argentine rider. Four points ahead of Budaga. Then we've got Bassini, or Bassini, sorry, in 12th. And then Antonelli, 13th. No, in 14th. And DJ Antonio, the last point score in 15th out of 33 riders. What the hell? That's insane. With the very Roy that asks, the best of the non point scores in 16th is the Belgium ahead of Guevara, De Nino, and Cornfeather's best. Persia rider in 19th, and then you've got Suzaki in 20th, and the best Mahindra rider is Della Porta in 21st, with Finnish Patrick right at the back. So that's the championship at stake in Moto2 and Moto3, and next time I'll be heading to the Automotor Drone Room. Bruno Circuit in the Czech Republic, another fan, favourite form, McDonald and Elusive. So can they just continue up this streak, just not in MotoGP, but in Moto2 and Moto3 as well. Find out next time, Sam Fortune, and I'll see you then.